but because Jesus never sinned. Is this point very clear? It's the center and core of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now we want to talk this evening about the work of Jesus in the court. We've already discussed His perfect life. Now we want to talk about His death at the altar and His resurrection at the laver or the washing of the water. Now there are several prophecies of the Old Testament that pointed to the death of Jesus Christ in the court. And I would like us to analyze or take a look at some of those prophecies that we find in the Old Testament. The first of these prophecies is found in Genesis chapter 22. And so I invite you to go with me to Genesis chapter 22 and verse 2. This is the story of the sacrifice, or we might say the almost sacrifice of Isaac. And I want you to notice in Genesis chapter 22 and verse 2, in this story, Abraham plays the role of God the Father. And Isaac plays the role of Jesus Christ. This is a symbolic story. It's an illustrative story of the relationship between God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Now notice Genesis 22 and verse 2, a couple of very interesting details. It says here, Then He said, this is God speaking, Take now your son, your what? Your only son. By the way, that word only should be translated your unique son, or your one of a kind son, your special son. You say, how do we know that? Because Isaac was not Abraham's only son. You see, the Hebrew word yahid means unique. It means one of a kind. It means special. Abraham also had Ishmael at this point. And yet Isaac is called Abraham's unique, one of a kind son because he was the son of the promise. But now notice that he's not only called the unique son or the only son, but it says, whom you what? Whom you love. Does this sound familiar? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And so it continues saying, take him to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a what? See, there's the altar of sacrifice. Offer there him there as a burnt offering. Notice that he wasn't only to kill him, but he was to also what? Burn him. That's what happened at the altar in the sanctuary. And it says, on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Now, what's interesting in this story is the agony of Abraham and his son, primarily of Abraham, lasts three days. I want you to notice Genesis chapter 22 and verse 4. Abraham actually offers Isaac on the third day of his journey. It says in Genesis 22 and verse 4, Then on the third day... Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place, what? Afar off. Let me ask you, how long did the agony of the father and his son last when Jesus was on this earth? It lasted also what? It lasted also three days. Another interesting detail is that in this story, Abraham places the wood on the shoulders of Isaac. But Abraham has the knife and the fire. Now that's very significant. Let's read. Notice what we find there in Genesis chapter 22. It says, So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And now Isaac his son carries the wood. Let me ask you, who was it that carried the wood upon which it was placed? Jesus Christ. But Jesus was smitten by whom? Isaiah 53 says, by his father. And that's why Abraham has the knife and he has the fire. So it continues saying, So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together. And now we reach the climax of the story. 
when Isaac is about to be sacrificed, something spectacular happens. Go with me to Genesis chapter 22, and let's read verses 12 through 14. This is an extremely significant passage. It says, And Abraham said, My son, because Isaac has asked the question, you know, we have the wood, and we have the fire, and we have the knife, but where is the sacrifice? He says, And Abraham said, My son, God will what? God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Who was going to provide the lamb? God was going to provide the lamb for himself. And it says, So the two of them went what? Together. Very significant. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by, thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering. And now notice, was this a substitutionary sacrifice? Was it a substitute for Isaac? Absolutely. It says he offered him up, offered uh, it up for a burnt offering. How? Instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Now, do you know that according to the Bible, Abraham, at least in figure, or in a metaphorical sense, received Isaac from the dead on the third day? You say, where does the Bible say that? Go with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and verses 17 through 19. Let me ask you, was Isaac as good as dead for Abraham? He most certainly was. But what happened on the third day? On the third day, Abraham received his son back how? Alive. Now notice Hebrews 11, verse 17. By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises offered up his what? See, that word is not correctly translated, only begotten son. It really means his unique or special or one-of-a-kind son. The word monogenes in the Greek language doesn't mean uh, only begotten. It means the unique or special or one-of-a-kind son, just like it does in Genesis 22. And so it says, By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises over offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac your seed shall be called. And now notice, concluding, that is, Abraham concluded that God was able to what? To raise him up even from the dead, from which he also received him in a what? In a figurative sense. Did Abraham receive his son back alive on the third day? He most certainly did. And so we have this beautiful picture of a father and a son, the unique son, whom the father loved. And they suffer together. And the ordeal lasts three days. But on the third day, the son is given back to the father alive. This is a beautiful image of the relationship between God the Father and his son Jesus Christ and the suffering that they went through as Jesus gave his life for the sin of the world. And so in Genesis chapter 22, we have this beautiful picture that illustrates what Jesus was going to do when he came to this earth to die for our sins. But there are other prophecies in the Old Testament. Exodus chapter 12,